inside the truck at all times. We also ask that we keep our face coverings on, covering our mouth and our noses for our entire journey, for the safety of you, those around you, and those who get into the truck after you. Um, as far as our little ones go, we do a lot of lap sitting. We just ask that you do not lift them up. They are not Simba. You are not Rafiki's. And we want to make sure they stay in the same lap. Don't want to move them from lap to lap. They're in the same spot. Well, it looks like we're going to head into the little Atari forest. Now, the little Atari forest is almost a very shy creatures. If you look over on your right hand side, there is an okapi. Now an okapi looks like it could be related to the zebra, maybe have some zebra pants on, but he's actually not related to the zebra at all. He's more closely related to the giraffe, and we know this because of his skull structure and very long tongue. That okapi that you see there was not found until 1901. That just shows you that we can find new species almost at any time. Now the coolest thing to me about the Okabi is that his tongue is so long that he can actually lick his own eyeball. Well, looks like we're going to head into the Safi River, see what we can find over here. The sea of watering hole. Watering hole usually means more animals are near. They do like to hang out near the watering hole, maybe to stay hydrated or cool themselves down. You can kind of see the back end of a black rhino there. Black rhinos are the smaller of the rhino species, weighing only about 3,000 pounds. Yes, only 3,000. Now there's only about 5,000 left on this planet, and that's just due to poaching. Poaching is the hunting for those horns. Some cultures do believe that their horns have a majestic value, but really they're just like our fingernails and our hair. They're made out of keratin. There's another one there on your left side. You can kind of see those horns that we're talking about. Now continuing through the forest, I do see some greater kudu. Those are the tan animals there. Those greater kudus are females. We can tell because they do not have horns. The males will have really long horns that grow to be nearly six foot long in length. Now they're one of the taller of the antelopes, standing almost 55 inches at the shoulder. Looks like we got some bongos crossing right ahead as well. Bongos are known to be the ghosts of the forest, very rarely seen. Bongos, male and female, do have those large horns. It's a little bit harder to tell them apart. All right, he's going to eat something out of the road. Maybe he'll keep on going. But bongos and greater kudus have stripes on them that allow them to camouflage really well. So when a predator walks up, they'll see them. They'll turn around and walk away. It's because it kind of reflects out of the moonlight. There's also a bird over there known as the saddlebelt stork. Saddlebelt storks stand to be almost five foot tall with a wingspan of nearly nine feet. That's almost as long as a tarp above us. They just have a really long wingspan. All right, now heading into the river area. Now here in the river, it is more of an aquatic area and home to aquatic animals. So we're gonna keep our eyes on the water. That's usually where you'll find them. Now the Safi River is home to something like the Nile Crocodile, maybe even a Nile Hippo. But the Nile Hippos can be a little bit harder to spot. That's because they can hold their breath for nearly eight minutes, but you can actually see two of them there on your right hand side. We're gonna get a little bit closer to see if we can find any more. They don't actually swim. What they do is sink to the bottom of the water and then walk along the bottom of the water. And they can even sleep under the water. We'll just naturally come up to breathe. If you look out on your left hand side, there's a group of Nile hippos that's known as a bloat. You also see a pod out there, which is a group of pink bark pelicans. Now those pink bark pelicans get their name from the color that their backs changed during mating season, which of course is a pinkish color, and they're known for colonial nesting, meaning that they nest in large groups while the males and females do take care of that nest. And a group of pink bark pelicans will be known as a pod. So there we have a pod and a bloat. But make sure you remain seated facing all the way forward for me. We're going to go ahead and head out of the Selfie River, going over a small bridge that we can find. If you take a 
to look on your bottom left hand side, there are some Nile crocodiles. Now there's Nile crocodiles are the largest crocodilian in Africa. They're going to be almost 16 foot long in length and their jaws are so strong that they can break things like bones. But sometimes you'll see them laying on the banks with their mouths open. They're not actually smiling at us. They're just regulating their body temperature. So they might just be cooling themselves. Alright, we're going to head into a whole new ecosystem. This new ecosystem is known as the savannas. Down here in the savannas, these animals, they do not camouflage very well. They will depend on something else known as their speed. So they must be able to run really fast in order to get away from any predators that could be near. Now the savannas is home to some like the Akuli cattle, giraffe, maybe even a zebra, and that breeze feels so great. We're gonna head on down, see what we can find. Alrighty, heading down into the savannas. If you take a look here on our left hand side, the driver's side, we call this the overlook of all savannas. Kind of gives us a sneak peek of what's to come. Alright, heading down into the savannas. If you look way out the distance, left-hand side there are some African wild dogs also known as African painted dogs they're very family oriented animals so if one gets hurt they will not leave that one behind they do stay back to protect each other and each and every one of their fur coats are unique in their own way so they can't tell each other apart really easily on your left hand side there's some sable antelope now the sable antelope of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve and look, they're very fierce animals. They're in a fight or flight situation, they choose to fight. Those sable antelopes have been known to win against fights even with lions. And interesting enough, the females do dominate, so highest ranking male is still lower than the lowest ranking female, so girl power! <laughs> On our left side here, you'll see some of those wildebeest. Wildebeest get their name from the Afrikaner name Wildebeest. On our left and right side, you'll see some termite mounds. Now these termite mounds are made out of dirt and saliva. The larger animals like maybe the giraffes or the elephants will use them as a scratching post. So it does mean that their heart is nearly concrete. While the smaller animals like the springbok will use them to sit on looking out for any predators, maybe even hiding in between. If you take a look out on your left hand side, you'll see a dazzle. A dazzle is a group of zebras. Now these zebras, some people may ask, are they black with white stripes or white with black stripes? We've actually learned that they are black with white stripes. And we know this because they have black hooves, black mouths, and even a black tongue. Now those are mountain zebras, we can tell because if you look at their neck, they have an extra lack of skin known as a doula. And also they have smaller hooves than the other zebra species. Now they can walk in between the rocks and up and down the mountains. Now they do imprint on one another so they can't tell each other apart really easily. Immediately when born they will imprint on their mom. So they can tell exactly which one is their mommy. Looks like they moved over here got a little bit closer view of them. some more of those wildebeest. They are the largest herding animals I actually heard at about 1.5 million. So when born those wildebeest must be able to run within an hour or else they do have the potential to get left behind because their groups are always moving, always migrating. And also on the top of the hill you'll see some Ecoli cattle. 
Now the Ancoli cattle's horns look like they could be really heavy, but they're actually not. They're made out of a honeycomb-like structure, which pumps blood vessels through in order to keep them cool. So they only weigh about five to 10 pounds each, not very heavy in comparison to their body weights. Then right along all of them are some small spring box. Those are the small tan animals there. The spring box can actually spring up six foot in the air, nearly 13 foot forward. Kind of where they get their name from for the way they're able to spring around. Now they're only about 100 pounds each and that is as big as they will get. So that does make them the very smallest antelopes here on our reserve. But taking a look on our left hand side, you'll see a group of giraffes. That would be known as a tower. Now these are massage giraffes, we can tell. Scream at the animals, I'll actually make them walk away. These are Maasai giraffes, we can tell because of the pattern on their skin. It's more of a rigged pattern in comparison to the other giraffe species. Now, they spend the majority of their days eating, only about 30 minutes resting. Since they eat so much, they do have a purplish blue tongue, and that's just to protect it from the sun. They also have the highest blood pressure of all the animals at about 300 over 200. Now, they can pump blood all the way to the tippy tops of their heads, but no worries, this doesn't hurt their heart. Their heart actually weighs about 20 pounds by itself. Looks like we're gonna head into Mandrel Hills. I do see some knockdown trees, so that might mean an elephant is near, so keep a lookout. If you take a look out on your right hand side, you'll be able to see an elephant there. That is a male elephant. We can tell because he's by himself. Male elephants do tend to stay by themselves, so create groups called bachelors, which is a group of males. They usually do that at about age 15. Before age 15, they are with their moms. Wow, that's an amazing view of that elephant. Now, sometimes you'll see them throw dirt or hay on their back. They actually do that to protect their backs from the sun, and it also cools themselves down. They also flop their ears back and forth to cool themselves down as well. Now, female elephants, on the other hand, will actually stay with their moms throughout their entire lifetimes, staying with their moms, aunts, cousins, and sisters. And they all can live to be almost 60 years old in age. But now this is about a halfway point through our journey. So just as a reminder, remain seated, keeping our hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck at all times. And also make sure we're keeping our face cover and on, covering our mouth and our noses for our entire journey. The safety of you, those around you, and those who get into the truck after you. And I can't see everyone in my beautiful magic mirror. So just make sure you have all of your face coverings all the way on over our mouth and our noses. used by the elephants. Elephants tend to eat large amounts of red clay and that's because it works as a source of vitamin and mineral for them. So kind of like how we take our vitamins daily or like we should, the elephants do the same thing by eating red clay. And I do see some tusk marks there on our right hand side so we'll keep a look out see what we can find. This is elephant country. This is where some of the females like to hang out. I do see one over on our left hand side. We'll get a little bit closer right as we turn the corner. I also see some way out in the distance there. Now we've actually learned through the Disney Conservation Fund that elephants are afraid of bees. So we brought this to Africa and began building beehive fences. And with these beehive fences, we're able to protect the farmers' farmlands and also create another source of income for the farmers with honey. But you're probably wondering why these large elephants are afraid of tiny bees. That's because their ears are really sensitive. So that buzzing sound is much louder to them than it would be to us. Kind of like how a dog whistle works. Down our left, our right side there and also one on our left side there are some baobab trees. Those baobab trees are leafless about nine months out of the year. They do hold lots of water inside their trunks so animals like the elephants or other horned animals can actually poke holes in them and begin to drink the water during the drought seasons. It also makes the baobab trees known as the tree of life. If you look over to your left hand side you'll actually see one of our youngest elephants there. She's about four years old in age. Now, when born, the elephants are already about 150 to 200 pounds, but they're going to grow to be anywhere from 15,000 to 20,000 pounds. And the elephants, female elephants, are pregnant for nearly 22 months. That's almost two full years of pregnancy. Can you imagine that? 
All right, taking a look on your left hand side, some flamingos. These are the greater flamingos. They are the tallest of all the flamingo species. If you look closely, you'll see a couple of them there, kind of gray and white. And they turn their full pink colors at about 18 months old, and they'll turn their full pink colors from the shrimp they eat, which contains beta keratin. And then a group of flamingos will be known as a flamboyance. Now, if you wanted to see some lesser flamingos, a different species of flamingos, you can actually see that at the very front of the park. And you can even earn your flamingo badge right in front of the tree up one. On our left hand side, there are some scimitar horned oryx. Those scimitar horned oryx, they can go almost nine months without drinking water and their bodies will not break a sweat until they reach almost 115 degrees. So if I had to guess, they're probably not sweating today. It's not too hot outside. There's also a mud hole there. That mud hole is used by some like the white rhinos will use it to roll around in to cool themselves down. They might even use it as a sunscreen or bug repellent. So we'll keep a look out for some of the white rhinos. cheetah up on our left hand side in just a moment. Cheetahs are the fastest running land animal. Ooh, look at that one there. They have non-retractable claws. That means their claws are always out. That way they can grab the ground and run really fast. Now just because those cheetahs can run so fast does not mean they catch their prey very well. They have low stamina so they get tired in nearly 60 seconds even though they can run up to 60 miles per hour. So if you're hard-headed, you're probably thinking, I can outrun a cheetah because I can run really fast and longer than 60 seconds. Well, unless you can run 60 miles per hour, you're not going to have very much luck. Aw, cuddles. This is so sweet. <laughs> Looks like anyway, until you walk over there. <laughs> All right, we're going to head into the Colby Rocks. Now, the Colby Rocks is just a large formation of rocks used by many different animals. Looks like there's some lions up here. They're kind of hiding in between the rocks, so they're just barely gonna be able to see them. So keep a lookout. They're kind of in the patchy grass area between the two rocks, the large rock and the small rock. Now you can see the male lion there. You can tell it is a male because of his mane. His mane could weigh almost 40 pounds by itself. They're nocturnal animals, so they spend most of their day sleeping or resting. About 14 hours of the day will they sleep or rest. And the female that you saw on the other side, she'll actually do all the hunting. The female lions do all the hunting at night, and that's because their night vision is six times better than a human's. And then the male lions will stay back to protect the pride. If you take a look on your right hand side, there's a Bontabok there and also a white rhino. But that Bontabok was almost extinct in the 20th century. There's only about 17 left of its kind. So one farmer gathered all the Bontaboks up. They began to breed. Now there's about 3,000 left on different observes, just like this one. Kind of shows you how one person can make a difference, just like you. Now if you were to hear a lion roar, the roar could be heard up to almost five miles away. So if you're staying somewhere close, like the Wilderness Lodge, you might be able to hear that lion roaring early in the morning, maybe later in the evening. On your left-hand side, I just barely see some warthogs laying behind that uh, log there. Yeah, they kind of look like large, hairy rocks. Warthogs are the largest burrowing animals. I actually dig those burrows and then go in backwards, using their tusks to protect themselves. Very fierce animals. And coming up on your right hand side you'll be able to see a white rhino there. White rhinos are the larger of the rhino species. They weigh about 5,000 pounds each and compares them to the black rhino which is only 3,000 pounds. Now as you can see white rhinos aren't really white they're muddy but even under that mud they're a gray color. They get their name from a mistranslation of the Swahili word vite spelled v-i-d-e that does mean why because they have a whiter mouth than the black rhinos. 
You also see some ostrich eggs there. Now those ostrich eggs, they weigh about three pounds each and they're so dense that a grown man could stand on them and they would not break. That's because ostriches are very large birds. They want to ensure when they sit on them, they don't break them. Now not all of those ostrich eggs will hatch. Only about half of them will because only about half of them are actually fertile, just like regular chicken eggs. But it looks like we're making our way into Magotti Glen. Magotti Glen is the newest part of the reserve, so it's in the works and in the making. But we're gonna keep a lookout and see what we can find over here. All right, now Magotti Glen is home to the warden's post and some of his newest and cutest animals. So we'll keep a lookout and see what we can find. Oh, it looks like I'm starting to see some Nigerian dwarf goats up there. Now, those Nigerian dwarf goats, as cute and playful as they may look, they're actually very sourceful. They provide a source of milk for our village area. That way, our village and reserve can work all together as one. But if you look really closely, you'll be able to see they have very large tummies. That's because they have eight stomach chambers inside them that allow them to eat all the undergrowth and grub that the other animals do not eat. So, you can eat and process just about anything that they want to. But since we found our warden's post, it does mean we're getting closer to our village area. If you want to know how you can help all these animals, remember to reduce, reuse, and recycle. When you reduce, reuse, and recycle, you're protecting these animals for centuries to come. So you're walking around today, you finish your bottle of water, don't throw it in the trash can, toss it in the recycling bin. Disney has many recycling bins throughout their parks and their resorts. And then if you have all the other materials, you're not sure if you can recycle or not, feel free to ask any of our Disney cast members. We'll be more than happy to help you learn about the recycling in this process. Now say reducing, reusing, and recycling is not enough for you. You already do it. You want to do it even more. You can actually donate to the Disney Conservation Fund at any of our merchandise locations. And Disney does match it dollar for dollar. So you're walking out. Today, you go to the merchandise shop, you want to buy a souvenir, go ahead and make sure you donate a dollar. Once you donate a dollar, you'll actually get a cute little button just showing off that you donated. Now, it looks like we made it all the way back around to our village area, so go ahead and check your pockets, check your rows, make sure you don't leave anything behind. It is a long walk all the way back here to Africa. If you get to your car and realize you forgot your keys, trust me, I've done it before. Now, just as a reminder, my name is Georgia, and yes, I'm from Georgia, and I was your safari truck driver. If you have any questions, feel free to come to the front and ask. I'll be able to answer to the best of my ability or get my warden at the unloading area to try and help me out.